In the last video, video 156, which you definitely should watch before this one, we looked at problem 7.1.7 .7 in Broverman. We were looking at the Macaulay duration of a coupon bond and thinking about limiting values of that duration as various quantities either approached infinity or approached zero. And I said for two of these situations that the formula was complicated enough that it was difficult to give a financial interpretation to what we saw. In this video, I want to rectify that. I realized in thinking about it some more that they do have financial interpretation, so I'm calling this an extension of problem 7.1.7. .7. And to describe it, I'm saying we're going to derive alternative formulas that are easier to give financial interpretations to. We're going to give financial interpretations to them. These are limiting values for the Macaulay duration of a coupon bond as the coupon rate goes to infinity and as the yield rate goes to zero. Having financial interpretations of formulas in financial math is a definite big benefit. Very strong problem solving tool for you because what it allows you to do is it allows you to reason out what the formula should be if you don't happen to remember it without having to do a bunch of fancy algebra to derive it. Okay, So it's definitely a good thing to have. So here we have it. Same setup as last time. D of R comma N comma J is a function giving you the Macaulay duration of a bond of face amount F and redemption value F. That's assumed in the background here. Function of the number of coupons, N coupons at rate R per coupon period and yield rate J per coupon period. Do note here that there is no F shown in this notation for the duration, and that is because F is irrelevant. I think that's worth noting right from the start here because in what I do in this video, I'm going to just essentially take F to equal 1 to keep it a little sim simpler. So note the, uh, the value of F, as long as the redemption value does equal the face amount, the value of F is irrelevant. You might recall from recent videos, if you've been watching them, that the value of F cancels in the formula for the duration. You find it as a factor in both the top and the bottom of the formula, and it cancels. Okay, So again, I'm going to just, from this point on, I'll take the value of F to equal 1 in thinking about the rest of the things in this video. Part A. In that last video, video 156, we saw this fact right here that the limiting value of the duration as the coupon rate goes to infinity equals this. And I said, that's kind of a complicated formula, hard to give a financial interpretation to that. It also does happen to equal this, that's not a big deal, it's just something I added on here. In this video, now, we want to show that we have an alternative formula for this limit, and we can give a financial interpretation of this fact. That's easier to give a financial interpretation of that. Okay? <clears throat> and that can help you to remember it. But we want to do, do want to verify that these are the same thing, in fact. We want to show that this is true. Okay, um, Of course, R going to infinity is not a real practical thing because uh, the coupon rate would not go to infinity, but I think it's still a worthwhile exercise anyway. B, which is a more important kind of practical fact, also from video 156, we saw that this fact was true, and once again I looked at that equation and I said, that's not a very intuitive fact either as far as of being able to guess that that would be the answer. <clears throat> um, however, there's an alternative formula for that as well that doesn't look a ton simpler. It's that it equals this. However, based on the way this is written, it's a little easier to give a financial interpretation for this. Give a financial interpretation of this fact if we think about it in the right way. Okay? All right. Um, so let's first start by just verifying that this expression simplifies to this. Okay, so this will be some algebra with formulas. So we have the ratio, uh, your present value of your standard increasing annuity uh, with payments at time, it's an annuity immediate with payments of, of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 up through n at times 1, 2, 3, 4 up through n, divided by your present value of your basic annuity immediate with payments of 1 at times 1 through n, Based on the formulas for those things, which you really should have memorized, and we've used a fair amount recently in my videos, there's your formula for your increasing annuity, there's an increase, there's an annuity due expression, and this thing would be 1 minus v to the n over j, where of course v is 1 plus j to the negative 1 power, 
these J's cancel here, I can also replace a double dot with one plus J times A, which will equal this. And now it's just a matter of multiplying the top and the bottom of this expression by the appropriate thing to make it simplify to this. And if you think about it a bit, if I multiply the top and the bottom by j and also 1 plus j to the n, that should do it when you compare this expression uh, this expression with this one. And, I'll, and again, also realize that v is 1 plus j to the negative 1 power. Okay, so 1 plus j to the n will cancel with v to the n. Go ahead and multiply through. Uh, with the, Multiplying this by this, the j's cancel. I have a 1 plus j here and a 1 plus j to the n times 1. That gives 1 plus j to the n plus 1. This 1 plus j to the n cancels with the v to the n to give a 1, but I also have the 1 plus j there and a minus sign, minus 1 plus j. Comparing up here, it's looking good so far. And then I have um, the 1 plus j to the n canceling with the v to the n here, so I'm left with n times j, just like I have up here. Divide by um, j times, this thing times 1 will be j times 1 plus j to the n, and then when I multiply times v to the n, the v to the n and 1 plus j to the n cancel to give 1. I'm left with just a minus j. And there we have it that matches with this. Okay, so there's an algebra derivation of the fact that this equals this, and therefore if this limit is this, this limit is also that. Okay, but now we want to give a financial interpretation of this. How can we do that? Let's just think intuitively about, a, say, a timeline. This is part A here. So this, again, is a coupon bond. with n coupons and a redemption value of f, though I'm going to now take f to be 1 to keep things simple. So the, And then the coupons are going to be f times r, which will be 1 times r, or just r. I've got coupon payments of r at times 1 through n, and then I have a payment of 1 at time n. If Here's the way to think intuitively. If r is really, really, really big, then these coupons are much bigger than the redemption value. Okay, I'm talking really, really big. R is going to infinity. R is growing larger and larger without bound in this limit here. That would never happen in real life that R would be so big, but here, for the sake of doing this exercise, we are imagining that R is so big that it's much bigger than 1. Effectively, it's almost like you're saying this timeline is approximately... Um, this timeline ignore the one, okay? I mean, I guess I could have just crossed off the one or something like that. When r is really big, you can ignore the one as the point with this, with, with what I've drawn here, okay? And so the duration of this will be approximately the duration of this. And for the duration of this, um, going back to the original formula for duration, I could think of it as a weighted average of times. I can also think of it as a ratio where in the bottom I have the present value um, of all these payments. These are level payments, present value according to some interest rate. The interest rate would be J here. The present value of these would be R, A, and J. And then for the numerator, I have to find a present value with respect to also weighting these things. I have to multiply this one by 1, the time it occurs, this one by 2, the time it occurs, etc. This one by n minus 1, the time it occurs, and this one by n. I'm going to get, um, essentially, when I think about that, that summation and discounting those back in time, I'm getting the present value of an increasing annuity immediate with payments of R. And now the R's cancel. I should probably not say equal here. It approaches that for large R, or as R goes to infinity. And then for any given fixed value of R, those cancel. And this is going to be the ratio I, A, and J divided by A and J. Okay, so you, what I'm trying to emphasize is you can reason it out. Okay, if you had to, to use this this limiting formula here for some strange reason because of some strange problem, 
you could reason it out. This is a good exercise anyway. This sequence of payments is approximately that sequence of payments when R is large. We can ignore the one, okay? And again, thinking about the formula for the duration as a ratio like this, where we have the present value of the whole payment stream in the bottom and the present value of the payment streams weighted by the times in the top, you can reason out this formula, okay? And again, we saw that these two things are equal. That's then part A. On to part B. Okay, start again algebraically. Let's show this equals this, and that's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is multiply the top and the bottom of this expression by 2 and expand it out, and you'll be done. So multiply the top and the bottom by 2. Twos cancel there, you get n times n plus 1r plus 2n. On the bottom you get 2nr plus 2. And now expand it out and maybe do a little rearranging for good measure. If you like, put the r's before the n's. Expand this out, I get n squared times r, or r n squared, plus n times r times 1, or r n plus 2n over 2rn plus 2. That is the same thing as what we got in that last video, video 156. Okay, so that's a brief algebraic verification, but more importantly, what's the financial interpretation of this fact? Um, now we're thinking about the duration as j, the yield rate goes to zero. So j is going to zero. And again, let's go ahead and imagine a timeline here. Again, pretending f is 1, the coupon payments are going to be r. Got that kind of thing. And if j is going to 0, if it's really close to 0, or if it in fact equals 0, then there's really no discounting going on with present values. Right? If j equals 0, the present values of all these payments equals their nominal amounts, in name only amounts. So the duration then we'd go to essentially a fraction where in the bottom I have the sum of all these things. I've got n r's. I could write that as n times r. And I also have the 1. That would be the present value of this payment stream when j is 0. Okay? I'm sort of imagining as j goes to 0, but when j equals 0, the present value of these payments or what they are. It's the nominal amounts themselves. In the numerator, just like before, I have to weight these things by the time that they occur. So the first r gets multiplied by 1, the second r gets multiplied by 2, the third r gets multiplied by 3, etc. And again, I'm not discounting these because I'm essentially taking j to be 0. The last r gets dis um, multiplied by n. Oops, not a square there. And then finally, the 1 gets multiplied by n. Are these the same? Is this thing, is that numerator equal to this numerator? Yes, it is. And the way to see that is to remember, well, first of all, factor out an R. And hopefully you remember, this is something you really should remember, that the sum of the first n numbers, this summation right there, does in fact equal n times n plus 1 over 2. That's something everybody well-versed in mathematics should know. Okay, I'm not going to prove it. It can be proved with induction. The sum of the first n numbers equals n times n plus 1 over 2. It's worth remembering that. Actuary should know that. And that allows you to see financially. I reasoned financially by thinking about the timeline, thinking about j being 0, so present values are really the same as nominal amounts, thinking about the formula for the duration. That allows me to ultimately come up to this formula up here and write it that way if I want to. Um, so it can be reasoned out. And this is a more important thing, thinking about limiting values as j goes to 0. j, the yield rate could be very small. So this is a practical thing to think about. Um, again, I'm not going to prove that. But I think this was worthwhile to do. And I hope you found it worthwhile too. And um, again, just a reminder, giving financial interpretations is a good thing.